This video was made possible by Wix. If you are ready to create a website, head over to wix.com slash go slash infographics to try out one of their premium plans right now. We're embracing multiculturalism again in our serial killer hall of infamy, featuring murders that took place in India committed by someone the authorities suspected was of Indian nationality. We say suspect because this killer was never caught. As another one that got away, the stone man joins the likes of Britain's Jack the Ripper, America's Zodiac Killer, Babysitter Killer, and perhaps the best named serial killer of all time, the Servant Girl Annihilator. Today we'll see what Stone Man did, and why he was never caught, in this episode of the infographic show, Indian Stone Man. Before any of our Indian viewers point out to us that there have been worse serial killers in India, we would like to say we are featuring Stone Man because of the fact that he was never caught. It makes the tale all the more intriguing. We will, however, add these dishonorable mentions. Raman Raghav, called India's Jack the Ripper, killed 41 people in the 1960s. Surinder Kohli, a servant that along with his employer, Moninder Singh Pander, brutally killed, dismembered, and some say ate pieces of 19 young women just over a decade ago. Possibly India's most disturbing killers, on par with Britain's strangest couple, Fred and Rose West. And lastly, Charles Sobraj, who was half Indian and who we have already featured, possibly the world's biggest celebrity psycho. But let's now look at Stone Man. As we don't know who he is, we obviously won't be doing a bio, though we suspect the killer was a man. We don't know if he was cruel to animals, had sermons about the devil delivered to him by an angry father, or if he was abused by his biology teacher. What we do know is that a man nicknamed the Stone Man, we'll get to why he got this mythological sounding sobriquet, killed 13 people over just 6 months in Calcutta, starting in June 1989. All those victims were homeless, what the Hindustani times called pavement dwellers. If you went to Calcutta, sometimes called the City of Joy, back then, you'd have seen many of these sidewalk sleepers among the many millions of people that lived there. There were about 50,000 homeless in 1989. At the time of the murders, the LA Times wrote, his victims are street people, Calcutta's helpless beggars, lunatics, and rickshaw pullers who share their muddy concrete beds with the city's rats, garbage, and disease. The sad thing is that all those victims were never named. No one came to collect the bodies, so they were, in effect, non-existent in official terms. They were usually found in dark areas, where we suppose the murderer could easily creep away unseen. We should add here that other murders have taken place in India that resembled the Calcutta killer's modus operandi. Notably, the murders of homeless people in Mumbai in the 80s. Was it the same man or a copycat? Police don't know. That's because the victims had a massive stone dropped on their heads while they were sleeping. The media reported that the stone or concrete slab was usually 65 pounds or about the average weight of a healthy 9-year-old boy. Anyway, there's a good chance that the killer was the same man. The time frame works and as we said, the MO is exactly the same. It's a 1250 mile drive from Mumbai to Kolkata, but he probably took the train. That would have taken him around 32 hours, and with tickets today at $1.82, it would have cost him next to nothing if Stone Man didn't mind roughing it in second class. So, in 1985, some Indian homeless people, usually beggars by trade, were found with their skulls caved in. These were mainly in the neighborhood of Sion, on the fringes of Mumbai. Some might better know this city as Bombay, but it hasn't been called that since 1995. The Mumbai murders then stopped in 1988. They started again in 1989 in Calcutta, and then stopped after about 6 months. What did the police know? Very little, only that it was assumed that the killer was well built. Police also thought that it could have been the work of a group of people they just didn't know. One man survived an attack, but not surprisingly, he didn't get a good look at his assailant before a stone was dropped on him. We're not sure though if this is the lunatic that came forward in 89 and said he was a victim. In that case, it turned out he was lying and the cut on his head was a rat bite. Indian media reports that another similar set of murders happened in 2003. There were 9, maybe 10 murders in Kolhapur, which is about 400 kilometers from Mumbai. The victims had had their heads smashed in or hacked at by a knife. India Today wrote that a young man was found with his head smashed beyond recognition in a park in West Bengal in 2016. The report states that locals feared a return of the stone man. What does smashed beyond recognition look like? Well, for those of you who aren't queasy, there are photos of stone man's work online. So why was this crazed killer doing this? There's no easy answer to this question, but one online sleuth believes that the killings were part of some kind of religious ritual, that the murders were tantra related. According to this writer, that neighborhood we mentioned, Sion, sees a lot of this tantric stuff going on. You might also be surprised to hear that beheadings in India as part of these rituals is not uncommon. 
A quick search reveals a 2015 story of a four-year-old boy getting his head chopped off in India as part of a ritual, and there are other cases of this happening over the last few years, mainly to women. Sounds crazy, but if you know your Hindu goddesses and ancient tantric rituals, you'll know the goddess Chinamasta took off her own head. Nowadays, and in the past, a very small minority of superstitious folks in India believe that human sacrifice, such as decapitating someone, could lead to health, wealth, and prosperity. This was the basis of the incredibly scary movie just out called Hereditary. Another report in 2017 said a young man even chopped off his mother's head in West Bengal with a cargo, or sharp knife, as an offering to the goddess Kali. Look at images of her online and see what she's sometimes holding in one of her four hands. Yep, a severed head. It seems that in India, it's not totally unreasonable to suggest that the stone man murders could have been tantric human sacrifices. If that isn't enough out of this world thinking for you, one Indian writer says that at the time of the murders, some superstitious people in the cities of Calcutta and Mumbai thought the murders were the work of some kind of supernatural entity. Others just thought the killings were brutal and done by an insane person. We are going back to the Stone Age, is what Rashpal Singh, the deputy commissioner of the Kolkata police, said at the time of the killings. Killing each other with stones shows what kind of progress we have made here, he said. The cop added that even though people feared this killer, it was sad that the public wasn't too concerned about the victims. That was because they were all poor and homeless. As for the other homeless, he said that they didn't care too much about the murders because life was already pretty tough for them. The police were under a lot of pressure at the time to catch this killer, so much so they summarily arrested and imprisoned lots of people. Human rights groups said many of those were tortured by police to extract a confession. If you want another version of what happened, there's a 2009 movie called The Stone Man Murders. Which reminds us, maybe we should feature Australia's worst ever serial killer, a man whose work was gruesomely fictionalized in the movie The Snowtown Murders. And let's transition to something more positive, like how you can create the best website in the world for your hobby or business. Wix is a professional and robust platform for creating, managing, and hosting your website. With Wix, you'll never have to worry if your website is safe and secure, or if it will go down because you don't have any internet connection since you moved off the grid to work on your hobby. Wix offers you true creative freedom when designing your website. If you want to create a website about those crazy serial killers out there, Wix has a solution for you. If you want to create a website to show off your new hobby, Wix has a solution for you as well. Create that website that you've been thinking about and support the infographic show at the same time by going to wix.com slash go slash infographics or clicking the link in the description. So what do you think? Psychotic killer or religious fanatic? Let us know in the comments. Also, be sure to check out our other video called John Wayne Gacy, the Killer Clown. Thanks for watching, and as always, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.